Minecraft is known for its blocks, so let's add some custom blocks to Minecraft 117.1 using Forge. Let's see how to do that. Alright, we find ourselves back in IntelliJ once more, and in this tutorial we're going to add our own custom blocks to Minecraft. Now adding blocks is a tad bit more complicated than adding items, but like always, I am sure we will manage. We're going to need another new class. This is going to be located tutorial mod package, right click new package and then block. And inside of that package, we're going to create a new Java class called mod blocks. Now this mod blocks class is going to look eerily similar to the mod items class because we will also have a public static final deferred register, this time of type block. Now what is very important here is that there are multiple block classes. Make sure to select net Minecraft world level block block class, not org nashorn internal IR or something else. This block class right here with the net Minecraft world level block. Very important. You can auto complete that by pressing the tab key when it's suggested and this is going to be the blocks. This is equal to the deferred register dot create forge registries dot blocks comma tutorial mod dot mod ID. And there you go. Now for this, we will need a register method once more. So at the bottom public static void register with an I event bus called event bus. And then inside of the method blocks dot register and then pass in the event bus. Now this will once again be called in the tutorial mod class. We can simply go here to the mod items and hit control D while we're on that line and then replace that with the mod blocks. Right now, before we can actually add a block, we need two helper methods, which are actually going to help us quite a bit. And this is going to be a register block method and a register block item method. We're going to start with the register block method. This is going to be a private static. And then we're going to have a angle bracket uppercase T extends block. I'm going to explain what this is in just a moment. Registry object of type T this time. And this is going to be the register block method with a string parameter called name and a supplier of type T. And this is going to be called block. Now what we're going to do here is we're going to make a new registry object of type T to return. It's going to be equal to blocks that register with the name and the block. And then at the end here, we're going to return to return. So what craziness is happening here? Well, the craziness here is really only this part. A registry object we've seen with these angle brackets, this is a generic. This means that you can basically put in any class in here that you would like and the registry object would simply work. This doesn't of course quite work. And in this case, we actually want to restrict that. So we're saying that, okay, whatever we put in here into this T, it actually needs to extend the block class. So that's very important. Why are we doing this and why are we not calling the blocks.register method directly? Well, we also need to register an item. So for that, we need a second class, which is going to be a private static. And this is going to once again be t extends block. And this is going to be a void, however, register block item with once again a string name and a registry object of type t called block this time. And this is going to call mod items. So the deferred register in the mod items class dot register and then with a name and then the second parameter is going to be a supplier of a new block item a so block item with block dot get as a first parameter and then new item properties and then we're just going to say tab dot creative mode tab dot tab misc and we're going to format it like this so that we can read it a little bit better and then we're going to call this right here so register block item with the name and then to return the registry object so what does both of those do well we're calling this method when we create a new block therefore creating the new block as well as the block item. So we always need an item that is associated with a block. Otherwise, we don't see that in the inventory. Therefore, we need to create both at the same time. And I have created those, you know, methods here that it makes it a little bit easier for us so we don't have to do some crazy stuff. This is actually fairly straightforward. If anything is unclear, of course, once again, I can only say that, you know, some Java knowledge might help with that. But also, you can always ask a question in the comments below if something is unclear. And I will try to answer that best I can. Right now, on to adding the new blocks. So we're going to make a public static final or registry object of type block here. And this is going to be the titanium underscore block, which is equal to a register block in this case. So the register block method with the name titanium underscore block. Once again, this name here is generated automatically by IntelliJ. So you don't have to add that yourself. And then we need a supplier. So open and close parentheses followed by this arrow of a new block here. Once again, making sure that this is 
the correct block. And this needs a block behavior dot properties dot of. So we're going to basically copy a material. This is going to be a material material dot metal, which we're going to copy. And then after that, if I put in a dot, you can see that there's a lot of things that we can specify here. So the blocks are far more complicated than the items, at least in terms of what you can add sort of in house. So as you can see, you can add some light levels, you can, you know, say that this is a redstone conductor and some other stuff. What we're going to add is a strength modifier here. So the strength basically simply determines, okay, how strong is this? So how long does it take to break? And also how resistant to explosions is this block. So titanium is of course very strong. So we're going to put in 12. This is very strong, by the way. It's not quite as strong as obsidian. For example, obsidian actually has a break time of like 50 F. So it's not quite that much, but this is still quite a lot. So this is double the time that it takes to break uh, iron, for example. I think that that's good. But with those numbers, you can always play around with them. You can, of course, always change this number. So that's actually the great thing. And the strength method actually has a two variants. So once again, this one is the destroy time and then once the explosion resistance if you only put in one float number here then it will take this float for both of those right now i've mentioned that the block is a little bit more complicated than the item and that is the case because we're now going to take a look at the json files and those are going to be a bit more complicated so in our tutorial mod folder right here in the assets folder right click new directory and this is going to be the block states once again making sure that this is written correctly very important definitely double check that everything is written correctly there right click new file and this is the titanium underscore block dot adjacent now this is now a block states json i'm going to type this out once and i'm going to explain what's happening here so we need the curly brackets and then we have a variance colon curly brackets and then empty quotation marks colon curly brackets and then quotation marks model colon quotation marks tutorial mod colon block slash titanium underscore block. This is of course all available for you in the description below. There is either individual gists or the GitHub repository as well. So you don't have to type everything out yourself. Now what is happening here? Well in block states we can basically have different variants of a block. You can for example imagine that you might change the texture depending on some state of the block and that is basically what this does. Now we have very normal blocks at the moment so we don't need to change the texture or the model. So this points to a particular model in the models folder and then in the block folder called titanium block. So in the models folder, right click new directory called block. And inside of that, right click new file titanium underscore block dot json. Now this is a block model json. We've previously seen item model jsons. However, block model jsons look a little bit different. They once again, of course, require the curly brackets and then a parent. This time of type block slash cube underscore all comma textures colon curly brackets all colon tutorial mod colon block slash titanium underscore block. Now this is actually very similar to the item model, however a little bit different. The parent here is cube all. This means that all of the textures of the cube point to the same texture here. Once again located in the textures folder of the tutorial mod namespace or the tutorial mod assets folder here in the block folder called titanium underscore block. So inside the textures folder we need a new folder right click directory block and I'm going to copy over the titanium block png here so there you go now the titanium underscore block png is in the correct folder and sadly the block model is not all we need we also need an item model so in the item so in the models item folder right click new file called titan titanium underscore block dot json we need to add the following curly brackets and and then parent colon tutorial mod colon block slash titanium underscore block so this one right here simply points back to the block model and will display it in this sort of 3D fashion that you will basically know almost every block is displayed in Minecraft inside of your inventory. The last thing now is the translation. So I can simply duplicate the item here and then change this. So this is going to be block.tutorialmod titanium underscore block. And then of course this is going to be titanium block. Right and now after everything has been added, let's see if it works. All right, we found ourselves back in Minecraft once more and let's see. So if I go into the inventory miscellaneous tab and there is the titanium block so I can put it in the inventory and I can also place it down and it looks amazing. I really like it. 
I like the way it turned out and for a little bit of troubleshooting. So if you have the titanium block inside of your inventory, but the texture does not display properly in the world, then please double check your block saves JSON as well as your block model JSON. Either of those will have an error. It is most likely the block saves JSON. If you do not see the item inside of your inventory, so if this is sort of a black and pink texture for the block, then you will have an issue with the item model or the block model. So please double check that as well. So just like last time, I will leave you with another texture here. This is going to be the titanium ore block right here. So you can basically add that as well if you want to. Download link is of course in the description below and the sort of the reveal or all of the methods and all of the JSON files and all of that is of course also linked in the description below. So this is already in the GitHub repository as we speak. But that would be it for this tutorial right here. I hope you found this useful and you learned something new. If you did, I would of course appreciate a like and don't forget to subscribe for more tutorials just like this and I will see you in the next one. So yeah!